Hi there, this is Joan of Health and welcome to my health and lifestyle channel where I post videos every week about weight loss, nutrition, beauty, lifestyle, how to be your best over 50. Welcome to today's video called Discovering Your Personal Relationship with Food, A Journey to a Healthy Lifestyle. In this video, we're going to explore the unique ways that food affects us all differently. We're going to dive into the personal relationships that people have with food and how it can affect our weight and overall health. So whether you're 50, 60, 70, or you're looking to lose weight, or you simply want to lead a healthier lifestyle, this video is for you. So let's embark on this journey together and discover how we can develop a positive relationship with food. Well, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and make any comments. And if you like it, I would appreciate it if you would share it with somebody. Thank you. This module is about understanding your relationship with food. So something that impacts almost everyone is what our relationship to food is. Now, I don't specifically know at this point what your journey has been to get you here, but I'm thrilled you're here because you're in the right place. So somewhere, somehow, we started an unhealthy relationship with food because deep down inside, we all want to be super healthy, have a lot of energy, be super fit and live on really healthy food. And we get frustrated because we can't seem to do it. So it's like we want to love vegetables and fruits and grains, but our mind keeps taking us to donuts and pizza and ice cream. And it's very hard to understand it, but this is your wiring, your brain chemistry. And no one has ever really taught us this. And I know this sounds crazy, but guess what? Your mind really wants you to binge on sugar. Yes, it does. It really does. If you went back 500 years ago and you're walking in the forest and you came across apples or mangoes or honey or berries, your mind didn't go, oh, that's a lot of fructose in there. Just take a small amount. Your mind said, oh, my God, there's apples and mangoes and berries and there's honey and there's fruit. And you know what? Food is scarce. And I don't get this food very often, so I'm going to binge on it till it's all gone, and then I'm going to lay down and get fat, like a bear does in hibernation, because food is scarce. So this is survival and evolutionary, and that was very useful hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but it's not useful today at all because there's food everywhere. There's way too much food. People are way too fat, right? So let me ask you this. When you wake up first thing in the morning, I bet you think of like, you know, a latte or <laughs> ice cream that's in the refrigerator that's calling your name or cereal or a bagel or waffles or pancakes or muffins or leftover pizza. Most people don't wake up and want salad and broccoli, right? So, when you get up in the morning, what's calling you? Everyone tells me the same thing. Cookies, lattes, macchiatos, chocolate, ice cream, pizza, candy, donuts. And if they're hungover, they want some more alcohol, right? So, you find yourself going back for more and you can't resist it. Now, there's a lot of factors here that you must understand. First of all, as I said earlier, we're wired for sugar and to be fat because food is scarce. I will show you how to deal with this, so don't beat yourself up. You're wired to want sugar and be scared that there's not enough food. Instead of trying to fight it, you have to understand it and then work around it so unconsciously you won't be terrified of hunger. Once again, why is this? Well, if you went back just a few hundred years ago, you died more of hunger than anything else. More people died of hunger and hunger-related illnesses. And so when we're hungry, our mind doesn't like to be scared and our mind wants to protect us. So we reach for the donuts, the candy, the ice cream, the pizza, etc. right? You have to understand that our mind is wired to tell me to go back for sugar. Plus, the food companies capitalize, us, capitalize on this by having sweet foods everywhere. And 
they're also increasing our physical and emotional capacity for more and more sugar, which I will explain shortly. Our minds are subconsciously wired to be scared of hunger. So remember, when we were babies, we were fed sugary, creamy, and mushy sweet foods. Guess what? The sweetness met all of our needs. It was like when I was tired or I was sad or I was lonely or I wanted attention or to be held or loved. Someone put something sweet like breast milk or formula from the get-go into our mouth and all of our needs were met like that. So now you know more than 99% of the population and I'm going to show you how to stop that inner fight and eat to lose weight and get to goal weight and then sustain it for the rest of your life. All right, so now we're gonna talk about what kind of an overeater are you? So there's different types of overeaters and I want you to look at what type of an overeater that you are and make it very clear because we can't fix what we don't know or understand and we can't heal what we don't know what we need to heal. So, are you an addictive eater? Do you love junk food even though you know it's not good for you? This is the most common category. Addiction is anything that takes you away from a bad feeling and moves you to a good feeling. And addictions are actually caused by lack of connection. So if you want to heal from this or help people who are struggling with addictions, you've got to learn how to connect more. Are you an angry overeater? Do you eat when you have a lot of feelings about something? Or (laughs) are you an emotional eater who uses food to feel better? So many people are emotional eaters. Or are you a destructive overeater who sabotages every effort to be leaner and lighter because at some level you might think you're safer if you're a bit heavier? Or maybe you're an ignorant overeater who believes that McDonald's burgers and french fries and Diet Coke is actually good for you. This is very common because we're fed so many lies by food companies, which is the biggest culprit with hidden ingredients and foods and combined with creative marketing campaigns that actually make you think that eating fast food and junk foods are good for you when we deep down inside know that it's not. One more here. Are you a habitual eater who's been trained to eat everything on your plate or you can't have dessert or you can't go out to play or it's rude Or maybe you see visions of all the poor people dying of starvation in your head. Hmm. You see, these six categories of overeating are not something that we're born with. People are not born to be addictive eaters or destructive eaters. They've learned it. And since all of these behaviors are learned, you can unlearn them again with the tools and techniques in this program. So once again, just understand, biologically, your mind is wired to be craving sugar and to be scared of hunger. So the only way to succeed at having an ideal weight is having an ideal mindset. Overeating is an emotional act. You will learn to train to change and transform your relationship with food forever. And I'm going to show you how to create and maintain a healthy relationship with food. So during your weekly sessions with your coach is where the magic happens. It happens quickly. Remember to choose wellness in every situation. All right, thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Joan of Health. Please like and share this video and also make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.